My name is Chris Perrin. I am a story artist and director over at Sony Pictures, and I've been there for about ten and a half years now. The challenging thing with animation is it's a big process, costs a lot of money, and it, it involves a large crew. So I think your first responsibility is to the story. It's something small. You have to you have to be passionate about the the nut of the movie that you're creating, and that passion will allow you to absorb all of the changes and slings and arrows that happen through the process. Because being flexible is, I think, another really important part of the job. Being able to bounce back from notes and, and being able to look at material that's not working and then find a creative solution, whether or not that's something that's coming from you or from your team, is priming that pump and being able to say, here's what I'm passionate about, help me get it, and then finding the best solutions for, um, for, for solving the film in the time that you have. And so I think in terms of being, uh, you know, you're, you're the coach, you're, you're doing a lot of um, uh, hopefully being inspirational and trying to pe keep people motivated, but you're not, from my perspective, I'm a collaborator. I believe in, in farming ideas as opposed to blocking ideas. And so uh, I think every director is a little different in terms of their process, but me and Cody, we firmly believe that, you know, if we can protect our nut of an idea but add to it, that's, that's, that's what we want. That's, that was our goal. So trying to farm that creative process. I mean, I think in live action it probably happens with different titles. Like you have your 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 DP and your director. You have your you know your head of cinematography, and a lot of those jobs do overlap in terms of the way co-director relationships often break down. Um, so for me and Cody, we we're both story artists, and so we live in the world of the what if. And there's a, there's a chemistry that comes from the brainstorming. Uh, energy that 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 we came up in. So the way we directed was we we used each other as a sort of creative sounding boards, and we created uh, a little micro ecosystem with our relationship that then expanded to the rest of the crew. Once we got to full production, you end up with a, a lot of plates spinning. So we have like 500 people. We have a crew in Vancouver. We have our actors spread all over the world, and we would lean on each other in terms of being able to divide and conquer to get the movie done. And I think one of the reasons why animation tends to look at the co-director model is because of the scale and the time it takes to make these things. And the fact that in live action, you, you, you have big crews, but they're all in one place, and you tend, to, you, know, you tend to make it in six to eight months, whereas animation, it's years. So it gives you an opportunity to insulate yourself if you get sick, if you get tired, if you need to sort of see your kids. Uh, having a trust relationship that allows the production to continue to march forward while you know, while you're being a human being is, is important. But I, I, you know, I've worked with a lot of co-directors on the crew side. And I think sometimes it's successful when there's a lot of trust and you have to have that trust. And that's not a natural thing when you just put two people together. Uh, I know for me and Cody, we'd worked together for like nine years before we started this process. And even for us, there was, uh, you know, some moments where we had to kind of learn to how to be together. And I think you have to let that happen. It's like a marriage, you know what I mean? It's like a mother and a father. It's, it's, it's not creepy in, in, in the cuddling you know, dynamic, but it's, it, is, it is that idea that we're in the same, we're in the same uh, sandbox with, with a common investment. We want the same thing. So we have to trust each other. And, and without that trust, I think it, it becomes a difficult relationship very quickly. So... Um, would I ever want to co-direct again? I think I would, if, if, if because I think there's a lot of benefit to it, like especially in the collaboration side. If you have two people that are passionate about something, it allows you to, to succeed in, in a way that, um, you know, imagining doing this for four or five years by yourself, it, it's, it's a lot of work. And, and so what's protecting the movie is having that diversity, is, ha is having that sort of chemistry. And, um, but it really does depend on that relationship. I think every movie needs to be evaluated at the, at, at the point of contact, you know. Why I need those people is because it allows you to learn uh, in a quicker way. Like you la it, I'm a visual person, so I think visually, and I, and I, I, I love movies. Uh, being able to hire, you know, a great production designer, a great character designer, a great art director, a great uh, story team, I'm not intimidated by the new ideas that come into the process because they, they, they help you to either calcify a defense for an idea that you're, you're passionate about or they add to the snowball and they allow you to sort of create a richer world. Um, I believe in the slice sort of 
filmmaking process where you don't just feed one department into another. I like the idea of a small team. So when you start your process, the more dynamic the ecosystem, I think the more interesting the learning curve is. So having a directing animator, having a production designer, having uh, you know our art director, Dave Bleich, involved early was really uh, helpful on the story side because we're starting to look at the movie in, in a very dynamic way. It's not just the words on the page. It's, you know, what, what does it look like color-wise? What does it feel like pacing-wise? How do the characters move? Uh, all of these things inform you in terms of your learning curve on uh, your ability to communicate your big idea. And, and the quicker you get there, I think the more time you have to develop because, you know, you need to start your idea before you can really work it. It's like finding your clay. I mean, you know, you know the clay's out there. You just have to find it, and then you can start to make your, your, your sculpture. The kind of chemistry thing that's sort of hard to define is an auditioning process that happens before you start your, your, your getting everybody into a room. Um, it can easily turn into a pile-on where you end up with like a bunch of mess. It's just like a big human sandwich of, of ideas. And that's not necessarily helpful. What you're trying to generate and what you're trying to, to create is, is, a, is a writer's room dynamic where you have a bunch of yes and people that are invested in the core idea of your movie. And for me, it comes down to casting. I mean, at the beginning of your process, you want as much as you can, and sometimes you have limited choices based upon who's available, who's at the studio, and, and, and you know, basically, you know, the business side of it, like who's, who's physically there. Um, we were very lucky in that there was, there was a, a lot of chemistry within our core group. And because we had that chemistry, we leaned on that core group. You know, we brought people in earlier. And I think, you know, depending on your creative process, if you're a collaborator or a dictator, I mean, there's, there's definitely benefits to both sides. I, for comedy, I believe in the whose line is it anyway sort of approach where it's like, you know, you pick up the ball and the next guy, when you put it down, the next guy picks it up and adds to it. And I think to get that, you have to really have the right chemistry with the, with, with the people there. So our art director and production designer, there's not a point where one switches on and the other switches off. They're both active um, throughout the process and, and they tend to flare up when they find the, the need like when they have an idea, when there's a, when there's a moment of, of inspiration, we want to be able to capture that and allow that to come into the room. Now everybody's got the rubber on the road job. I mean, we have to design the movie, we have to put up so many assets, we have to, you know, light the whole thing. So there is the mechanics of just making the film. But the conversation is what informs those mechanics. And so getting that conversation going early, um, I think is a way to kind of get the best, most invested material out of these people and I think being on the crew I was always more um, attached to the project when we're allowed to participate early and we're allowed to um, become invested and and really that's what I think the job of a director is like you know, in live action you hire an actor if I if I were to hire you know Morgan Freeman or Sean Connery or you know Charlize Snare and I want that person to bring what they bring to the table I don't want to hire them and then make them not do that. Do you know what I mean? Like you want, you're bringing in talent because you want them to add to your idea as opposed to just living on your idea and not, not growing it. So I, I, I really do, I mean, I, I come back to farming a lot. I think, you know, part of farming is, you know, you, you allow things to grow and you facilitate the growth and you try to help the growth and you try to, uh, you know, manage it and keep the bugs away and harvest at the right time. There's not enough water, you bring water in. Like all of these things are, are, are about allowing the corn to become corn and the cows to become cows. And do, do you know what I mean? So like as far as like the metaphor for animation, it's, it's, it's letting the people find their own passionate angle on your idea. That's where you get the best ideas from those people. That was a big part of the chemistry of this co-director relationship was there were times when one of us, usually it was me, was having an implosion. You know, it's like you have that moment where you stand at the edge of the universe, you see how big it is and you, you just freak out, you know. Um, and having that sort of soundboard, that kind of, uh, the ability to go to somebody and close the door and be very honest and saying, this is why I'm, you know, feeling anxious. These are where my insecurities are coming from and then talk it out. That's a really helpful thing because if you bottle it up, if you bottle it up, it doesn't go away. It just turns into some sort of, I think, growth inside of you that, that you're going to have to deal with at some point. You know, these, and, and let's face it, it's, it there's, you want to be creative. I mean, your main job is to tell the story. 
But around all that, you do have to manage everybody else's fear. I mean, you got to manage the executive's fear. You got to manage the crew's expectations, and you have to inspire them and sort of keep them from, from you know, feeling your worry and your 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 panic. I mean, all of these things are are happening at once. And at the end of the day. Um, the anxiety about money, budget, time, that shouldn't matter. What you should be caring about is what do my characters want? What's the movie about? Like, what's the audience going to experience when they're sitting in a dark theater? So these, these having a place to go to talk about this stuff, like like the therapy session, is important. I think you have to build it in. I, honestly, like, I use my dogs a lot. Like, I go for a lot of walks. Um, you know, uh, going to the gym is good. I have two kids, so sometimes it's just stepping away from the movie and spending time with other human beings that don't you know, worry about budgets and time and schedules and just sort of having those outlets is really important. The other thing is that we are artists because we observe the world and we come into this from our perspectives. And, and if you give up all of those perspectives when you go into this process, I think it, it hurts you. So I think the ability to balance things and sort of be a human being at the same time as, you know, you're managing all this stuff is important. So stepping away from it when it gets crazy is, is, is necessary. Um, but it's hard to do. It is hard to do. I mean, because the instinct is to clamp down and work harder. You know, there's a lot of all-nighters um, that probably hurt us rather than helped us, just because you're, you're, you know, you get so tight. Um, but that's the process, you know. And as Andrew Stanton says, you got to trust that process, and you have to go crazy sometimes. And you know, it's emotional. So, you know, hopefully you're in a place where people will let you do that, and you can, you can, you can grow out of it, as opposed to it being cataclysmic. Love it over here. It's great. Um, I mean, it was it flew in yesterday, so I'm a little jet lagged, and it's been sort of a blurry. It's a bit like drinking from a fire hose. It's just like there's a lot of stuff coming at you. But what I love about these shows is it's like a reunion. I mean, like you go to FMX, you go to CTN, you go to Ottawa. It's like you see people you haven't seen in so long, and it's such a great opportunity just to catch up and to sort of look and see what everyone else is doing. You know, uh, it's wonderful. The animation community is small, and it's it's uh, it's a really friendly group of people and so it's always a pleasant thing to catch up with old friends.